Hey everyone, welcome back to Pause and Talk. We actually took a little bit of a break for the summer, so we're super excited to be back here today. And I have the pleasure of introducing these two lovely ladies to you today. I'm sure you guys recognize them. They are always in our community. Um, but they're, one of them specifically is my personal mentor, so I'm very excited huh. to have both of them here <laughs> with us. So uh, Nikki Burns and Christine Barr. So welcome, guys. Thank you for having so us. So great to be here. Well, I, we really appreciate it. So um, we obviously, you guys are obviously involved with uh, Pause for Love Dog Rescue yes. and about a million other things. But today <laughs> we're going to talk about Pause for Love and how you ladies got involved uh, with the rescue. Pause for Love started in about 2013, and its founder um, was an amazing woman called Kim Tamanen. And I say amazing because I don't think I could do what she does. She's just unbelievable with animals, and her patience and tolerance and willingness to go the extra mile is, is beyond, mm -hmm. you know, beyond. And it's 24-7 for her. So she had been uh, working with another rescue and then decided to start Pause for Love. And I guess I came on the scene not all that long after she had started and said, hey, you know, I mean, if there's anything I can do, uh, <laughs> famous last words, <laughs> um, I will gladly help. And so I started to get involved and then ended up becoming her partner in the rescue. And it just sort of escalated from there. <laughs> what can I say? It's, it's been my it's, world. Yeah, I was going to say it's been a long, long time coming. Yeah, eh? six yeah. years. Yeah. And it's so hard to believe that it has really been that long. I know. Christine can, came in a little after that. Can yeah. you imagine right now, like, how many dogs' like lives you guys have actually saved? Yeah, I can tell you it's around 3,000. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't exactly I don't have the exact <laughs> number, but. <laughs> that's amazing. That's, such, that's amazing, guys. Uh, Christine, why don't you tell me how you got involved? And I've been involved almost four years. Mm -hmm. And I would be, I got involved as your typical Facebook puppy lover where I would see different friends posting that they were fosters mm -hmm. and these cute adorable puppies and you know like most people out there your heart melts <laughs> and so that's how I got involved with the melting heart so I at one point said I'm going to give this fostering a try and after that you got to know the people that were involved like Nikki <laughs> <laughs> and we just it's we just started to have a lot of fun with it. Yeah. So my it was a little more selfish on my end because I wanted the puppy snuggles. <laughs> and then with all the people that were involved, I was having a lot of fun. So the fun turned into good deeds. And like Nikki says, now you're in deep and uh, <laughs> you can't go back. <laughs> you can't go back, but you don't regret it. <laughs> yeah, I think that's even even how like like it started with me too, right? Because I obviously help with the fundraising with with pause for love mm -hmm. and yeah. it was like that's it, it just escalated it was kind of like a like a like a waterfall effect it was one dog and then it was yep. oh if you guys need anything and then it was and we had fun doing it oh my god it's been a blast. <laughs> and, and we have fun practically with everything but i don't want to give the illusion that there aren't days when you're not pulling your hair out oh yeah absolutely are. not you know i mean this is a lot of work yeah um, and the commitment to animals is very serious. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, while we talk about puppy snuggles and, yep. yeah. and big dog snuggles, because we oh, take yeah. in a lot of big Absolutely. dogs and we love to have adult dog snuggles too. Mm -hmm. um, and some of them come with issues and you mm -hmm. have to deal with that and behavioral and health. And, um, but you know what? Every time I think I need to step back, I need to step back. Um, I think, oh, but I have so much fun. And part yeah. of it has to do with the fact that I love the people. Yeah. Um, Makes the world a difference. Right? Yeah. We have an amazing team. We're all people. passionate, mm -hmm. you know, um, and that's, yeah. that's mm -hmm. what helps with everything. Good, and we're bad, like a family. You know, yeah. we fight, we disagree, we argue, and then we make up and we just yeah. move forward. <laughs> yeah. You have to, right? But that's part of the growth. Yeah. And obviously, so in a little bit, we're going to be talking about, um, you know, some specific cases of special mm -hmm. needs animals. We're going to talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly of, of you know, of like a rescue in general. Yes. Obviously, it, it, what, like what Nikki just said, it, is, it isn't just fun and games. Yes, uh, thankfully, everyone has fun and, you know, you guys have a great, you know, close-knit family. But unfortunately, you do. You go through a lot of scenarios where it, it's, it's unfortunate what you have to see, what the animals have to go through, and what you have to deal with on a daily Day -to -day yeah. basis right so um, I want to talk a, just a few seconds about um, you know not seconds but how um, positive love has grown because obviously you know six years in the making this is where you, like your guys are at right now um, the biggest news that you know the, the biggest change that has happened is that you guys gained your charitable status so do you want to talk to like a little bit about that and how that kind of came to and yeah sure um, I guess about two years ago uh, I really started thinking 
um, and, I, and I talked to Kim about it, I said, you know, what, if, what happens if something happens to you or something happens to any one of us that's sort of key in terms of Pause for Love? Mm -hmm. And I said, do you want to be able to see this organization grow beyond your involvement? Mm -hmm. And she said, yes. So I, I started to talk about that and think about that, and I thought, you know, what we really need to do then is to look, first of all, at establishing a board of directors, mm -hmm. and then look at um, establishing or getting a, a charitable status and becoming incorporated as a not-for-profit. Mm -hmm. And so we did a lot of research and a lot of investigation and brought it to, uh, we actually put, you know, a group of, of people together, seven people, Christine was one of them, yeah. and um, we talked about it. Is this something we really want to do? Is mm -hmm. this, and, and what does it mean in the long term and in the short term? Mm -hmm. um, and we decided that yes, there were, and there were a number of reasons. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and part of it is credibility, mm -hmm. because anybody can call themselves a rescue, and anybody yeah. can, you know, open up a shingle and say, hey, I'm a dog rescue, I'm a cat rescue. Um, but... <laughs> There, there isn't a lot that governs what those groups do. Yes. And so it's very easy for people uh, on the outside to point fingers and say, oh, you're just in it for the money. Mm -hmm. You're just in it for this. You're, you're, you know, you're, you're making a profit. You're, you're just, for, yeah. yeah. Um, but when you're a charity, there are lots of rules. Yeah. And when you're incorporated as a not-for-profit as well and you have bylaws mm -hmm. and everything, there are some very strict governmental rules mm -hmm. about what you can do and why you do yeah. it and what you can't yeah. do. And that was part of the motivation so that it really did enhance credibility Mm -hmm. showed people we were serious mm -hmm. in what we were doing because we had to go through a great mm -hmm. deal of effort to get that uh, yeah. registration. Yeah, like so now you officially answer to that governing body and I think it shows the community too that you know there's not not necessarily like like nothing to hide no. but you you have that responsibility now to open your books, you have that responsibility to be 100% open with yep. your community and it just I think it just creates that uh, that you know relationship it makes it a little bit more stronger, right? And it I does. think yeah. I think it's uh, it's definitely like even for myself, I've heard nothing but good things um, since you know, like, like obviously before, but since you, like you guys gaining that uh, charitable status, and I think that's a really big win for Pause for Love. So well, I it's agree. given us the opportunity mm -hmm. too, hasn't it, to oh. apply for for funds that we would never have been able to apply for before. Yeah. Oh, it's been wonderful. Yeah. The, bo the board of directors, it just we've gotten really good feedback from the community. Mm -hmm. It lets us work with bigger corporations. Yeah. Um, it just has been. It, it really, it's, it's been a struggle, and, you know, Nikki has been uh, a blessing to us, but yeah. it's just a been... Consultant a, a consultant. A consultant. <laughs> consultant. <laughs> trying to figure out what to call me now. <laughs> consultant slash therapist. <laughs> but um, she's been wonderful. So the board that we have together are um, different personalities, mm -hmm. which is is very good. We all have our strong points. Yeah. Um, we have our weak points, but our weak points is somebody else's strong point. Mm -hmm. So it really has, um, it's been a really good thing. It's been a work in progress, mm -hmm. little bumps along the way, but I feel it's just, we're just getting better as time goes on. We're getting our routines down. We're getting, you know, um, it's just been yeah, just it was a good decision. It good. was a very good decision. Well, um, yeah. I'm obviously very happy, and I'm sure our community, it means a lot to them too, right? Seeing seeing this big, you know, big uh, situation happen for Pause for Love, mm -hmm. I think it's, it's definitely a big one for When we come back, we are going to talk with Pause for Love about their adoption process and the foster parent process and how you as our community can get involved with the rescue. everyone and welcome back. Thanks for joining us again. Again, we have Nikki and we have Christine here from Pause for Love Rescue. Um, so right now we're going to spend a little bit of time talking about their foster progress, the adoption process, everything, um, and how you guys can help. So Christine, I know that you kind of are leading the, the foster parent process. You kind of take your, you're pretty much really developed into it. And yeah, so. I help out with it. Yeah. Um, with the whole coordination. Mm -hmm. So like me, if people 
people want to start fostering, what they do is just fill out their foster application, um, either um, on our webpage or through Facebook, you can inquire about it. From that point, we do a little bit of a phone interview, just so people are aware of what's involved with being a foster. Mm -hmm. um, from there, we do a home inspection. So we can talk to the foster, the potential foster parent and tell them a little bit more what's involved to let them know a little bit about safety features in the home. They can ask us questions back and forth like that. Yeah. Um, from there, once they've been approved to be a foster, when we get a call that we're going to get puppies or dogs in, we go through our list to see who's available and who's up for, for doing the uh, fostering. From there, we'll give them a call. Um, and they also, fosters play a big part in the adoption process as well. So we work with the fosters. There comes in again with the Pause for Love family. Mm -hmm. You know, we always welcome, welcome to the family, you yeah. know, when you begin to foster. So, uh, yeah, so we're helping them and they get the dog or the puppies in their house. Mm -hmm. They love them like they're their own. Um, they take them to their, their vet appointments and... Um, it's, it's a good community. Mm -hmm. You know, it really is a good community. It's very rewarding. It's mm -hmm. sad when they leave, yeah. but it's also rewarding because you're meeting fabulous people yeah. um, that are adopting these animals. We so. talked a little bit last episode, actually, because we, we called them, I, I, and I don't like personally saying foster failures just because it's it's a yeah. happy thing, right? Like, yeah. But, yeah. you know, so have, has Pause for Love had <laughs> quite a bit of foster failures? I'm yes. <laughs> okay. So you're this foster parent, so you're obviously a loving person because you're taking a rescue into your home. You're loving that, like I said, like yeah. it was your own. Now it's time to give them away. Yeah. That's a hard thing to do. Yeah. So we call it a foster failure is when you hit that point where you go I cannot give this dog away and at that point we get the little message to say I think I'm going to adopt my foster so that's why we call it a foster fail yeah so we kind of laugh you know and and lots of times if they do that you know a few months down the road they'll say okay I'm ready to foster again you yeah. know and then uh, just so they can kind of get like into the groove with the new animal and everything yeah. and then once they're ready then they can open we always their... we almost have a side bet going oh yeah. they're loving this one a lot is it going to be a fail oh so gosh, so, so we have fun we that's have fun. awesome yeah. um so the adoption process obviously you just kind of talked about it it some um some fosters lead into the adoption, like potential adoption. Right. Um, so how does Pause for Love's adoption process work? Um, it's similar to the foster process. Okay. We have uh, an application that, you've, that you fill in for adoption. Mm -hmm. um, and it's quite lengthy. Like we get into the details about adoption. We take adoption and fostering very serious. Yeah, I don't we, think that's a bad thing though. Nope. These, and we're proud of it. Yeah. Like, and I will not Good. sugarcoat that, that we are very strict on our procedure. So um, from there, from the application, the applications will go into the foster parents' hands. Mm -hmm. Um, they'll give them a phone interview and at that point um, see if they want to come and meet the pet and then there's more of an interview and they can find out what the what the dog is like uh, to see if their personalities match mm -hmm. to see if they have you know if, do they match the dog's life and does the dog match the family's life just because yeah. a dog or puppy may look cute and adorable doesn't mean in the in the bottom line that there may be you may be suited for each other mm -hmm. I know there's adaptability in everything but you want to make sure that you're in the best interest of the family and for the pet so um you know sometimes we get a lot of applications mm -hmm. for one dog and that's that's the hard part but you know because yeah. not everybody doesn't mean they're good they're bad whatever it just sometimes lands on when they fall in on the process mm -hmm. or how it goes every you know? situation is different right exactly There's yeah. a home check too yes yep. yeah we always always do a home check yeah to make sure that their house is suitable for the dog and mm -hmm. we know how we want to see how that dog is going to grow up yeah you know and what their um what their lifestyle is going to be like and uh yeah. And everything, eh? Yeah. Well, you know what? <clears throat> I think I'm, like I, like, I can personally say that I'm a huge fan of that intense process because I think that you should be able, if you have enough patience and you're taking the time and you're doing the adoption forms and you're working with the rescue, I feel like that, that I mean, I think it means a little bit more, right? You're it actually... Does. You know, so I if if I, I think if you're not okay with doing that process, then maybe it's not the right time to get that animal because a new animal in your home it takes tons of patience. Yeah, to, you know what I mean. So I think you know every case and every situation is different. We right? always yes. want to make sure too. It's not just about the cute little puppy face. Yeah, because these puppies grow into be large dogs Absolutely. with big responsibilities.
responsibilities. Yeah. So we just want to make sure that families are aware of it. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes new fosters come in and are uncomfortable with the doing the home inspection or the mm -hmm. home visit yeah. uh, end of it. Well, that's when we're like, you know what, that's okay. Lots of the times the board members will go and do the home inspection for them mm -hmm. just to make sure. We want to make sure that everybody's comfortable and that we're doing everything proper and um, everybody goes into the situation with their eyes wide open. Yeah. So obviously we discussed the foster parent process, we discussed the adoption process, and none of this would be able to basically happen without your amazing events that you guys put on throughout the year. <laughs> so the biggest one that's coming up is the Tubit Auction. That's fifth annual. Fifth, fifth annual. annual, that is crazy. Yeah, so It's gotten bigger every year. Um, it takes place on October 3rd, Thursday, October 3rd at the okay. Elks Hall. And um, we have 50 baskets, and they are loaded. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have a lot of people who participate in donating um, product, various businesses, and so on. And Christine and her wonderful husband, Chris, are the MCs. You and guys we did an amazing job part. last year. We, I said, let me talk about the fun part, because yeah. it is a lot of fun. Like, anybody who has been yeah. knows it's a hoot and holler yeah. and good evening, because um, the prizes are, are phenomenal, yeah. like phenomenal. And so we really, oh, we play with the crowd. We get them go. We, my husband's a teaser, and we tease people. We just, you know, we banter back and forth. Yeah. So it really, it's not just an auction. It's an event. Yeah, like it, it really is. is an event. Yeah. And we want people to come to say, yes, this is for charity. This yeah. is helping dog rescue. So please forgive our little hiccups along the way. Yeah. But my goodness, you are going to have a fun time. I'm not kidding you guys. Last year, I have <laughs> never seen women run as fast as they did like I was I was honestly concerned like it was it was such a great night though it was, it was. hours of fun we all had a blast it was such a good turnout I like I it was a great night so. you for sure get your steps put in oh Let's you get the that. steps put in <laughs> I just want to make sure we get in where the tickets are available oh yeah absolutely we run out of time so um, they are available through uh, at Sweet Escape Cake Cafe okay and bakery at uh, the commissary in the East End um, at the Elks Hall. Okay. We're not sure whether we'll have them at the door or not. It'll depend on whether they're all gone. And so we're mm -hmm. really asking people to get them get fast. Them early, and yeah. they can also check our Facebook page, the Pause for Love Facebook page, mm -hmm. and message us and let us know that you're looking for tickets and we'll connect with you and arrange to get them. Absolutely. So yeah, so guys, if you need any tickets, just message them or, you know, head to the spots that Nikki just mentioned. You're not going to want to miss this. I'm not kidding. <laughs> it was one of the best events that I personally went to last year, and we all had a blast. So make sure you go to that two-bit auction that supports everything that these guys do. And I think that is the most important thing. They can't do this without you guys. So That's I right. know how much it means to you, to you that, you know, like the turnout that you guys had last year. It was absolutely amazing. So hopefully the fifth annual is going to be <laughs> even better than the fourth. <laughs> All right, guys, when we come back, we are going to talk a little bit about some special needs animals that Paws for Love specifically deals with um, and kind of talk a little bit about what they are going to do going forward with these specific dogs. Stay tuned, guys. Hey everyone, thanks for joining us again. So now we are going to be talking about four specific special needs animals that came in to Pause for Love. Um, one of my favorite stories, so I already mentioned that this is going to be first, <laughs> is the famous Achilles. And I know that once I say that, everyone's probably like, oh, my Lanta Achilles. <laughs> oh. <laughs> because he is just, he stole everyone's heart in Thunder Bay. I know. We all know this. We've started a special Facebook page for him yes. in the hopes of uh, getting interest in him, but also in hopefully getting him adopted. So Achilles' mm -hmm. story is that he came into us over a year ago, about a year ago. And um, he was only about one year old at the time. Um, and the biggest issue with Achilles is that he was blind. He was born blind. And so he had never really learned, um, he had never really had proper structure or enough structure to help him feel secure in any environment. Mm -hmm. So we, we brought him into care. Um, we didn't realize the severity of the problems that we were going to face, but that was no big deal. I mean, it is what it is. So we took Achilles into care, but as we put him in foster homes, we found the fosters were returning him. And the reason they were returning him was because if they tried to discipline him or anything, he became reactive. Mm 
And if he was in a play mode, you couldn't stop him. And there were all of these issues that were starting to surface. So we started to go through about four or five different um, uh, fosters. And mm -hmm. I became like, okay, well, what are we going to do? This is, you know, this is a real concern. Anyway, we ended up sending him for a short time, until we figured this out, to a friend of ours who lives in um, near Rainy River, but who also has a blind dog. And so she was able to give him some structure, but even she said, he needs more training than I am able to give him. Mm -hmm. Well, I had heard a few years ago about uh, a fellow out in BC called Al McGaw, who has a place called Spirit of the North Kennels. And basically he takes dogs where this is their last opportunity, dogs that are about to be euthanized, dogs that just don't have any more time left. It's either we fix them or they're gone. Mm -hmm. And he has had remarkable success with them. So I messaged Al and I said, hey, here's the situation with Achilles. Any chance you'd be willing to take him and do you think you can help? So he said, he responded within a matter of minutes actually and said, yes, let's do it. So then we had to figure out how to get him out there. Mm -hmm. And so um, I contacted a friend, um, Margaret Foster Hyde, and she runs an organization called um, Furry Hobos and Highway Heroes. And they take dogs across country in their semis, their big mm -hmm. transport trucks. So we got him out there and he's doing wonderfully. He's not ready for adoption yet. He's still growing into the uh, aspects of trust. Mm -hmm. But oh my God, he is just doing so well. We will provide you guys the details. You guys have to go follow like the separate Facebook page. Facebook page, page Achilles the Mighty. There you go. <laughs> Obviously we all know about it. Um, it. Honestly, I look for the updates every single day. It makes me so happy and I just, you have to follow it. Um, so obviously um, we want to mention again, so Jem. So you guys Jem, wanna... everybody knows Jem. Yes. Jem is our little star. She came through a number of years ago and her story was that she had been abused as a puppy, as a, as a newborn practically, and so her spine was damaged. Now, Jem can walk. She can actually walk without a walker, but for, not for very long. Mm -hmm. And um, she has her own page on Facebook and she has Instagram and everything, so um, you can get to see her. And you get to see her sometimes without her walker. But we just want to highlight, the reason we're doing this is to talk about the fact that just because a dog is born with a disability or a problem doesn't mean they can't have a wonderful life. Mm -hmm. Jem has become a a sensation on the international site Dodo, the Dodo. Yeah. And she has stories about her all the time. And her mom, Erin, is absolutely magnificent, the most incredible mom. Mm -hmm. And Jem goes hiking and Jem goes waterboarding she does. She things. Our little she celebrities. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, she has a wonderful life. I so, think that's something that, you know, I wanted to kind of talk to you ladies about today too, like, you know, specifically when it comes to Pause for Love. Because I noticed that, you know, you guys are taking on, you know, more special needs cases. And one, I want to commend you guys for doing that because it takes a whole team, as we all know, to actually take and that on. And lots of money. Lots yeah. of money. Lots, you know, it, it, just in general. I think yeah. I think everything just gets heightened when it comes to these specific cases. Um, why, what was the turning point for, for Pause for Love and why did you guys specifically want to kind of go down this path with special needs animals? Was there a turning point no. or is it just something that... No, there's that never been a hesitation. <clears throat> yeah. You know, just we've we, always accepted them. Yeah. 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 You know, you have that love for an animal and we've always like, if this one needs us, we're going to be here to help them. Yeah. And no matter what the situation is, there's always the perfect home for yeah. a dog. Special needs are not. And uh, they just need the right person to come along, mm -hmm. the right rescue to come along for that specific dog mm -hmm. to help them out and get them on their way. We've had, you know, dogs like Floyd, who's also in a wheelchair, a little tiny guy, and he's, he's spunky amazing. Spunky little Floyd. <laughs> yeah, and spunky little Floyd was attacked by a huge dog. And then we've had dogs like Billy, that are, or Buddy, Buddy. Rather, that Buddy. have had to have yeah. their legs amputated. We've yeah. had multiple dogs yeah. that we've had to amputate their All legs. All these dogs, I, too, that we've had now join us in our fundraising. Yeah. yeah. And the adoptive parents have been fabulous. Yeah. And uh, so it's, it's a good way to show yeah. the community that there, are, there is hope for these yeah. dogs. I think too. I think social media is obviously a really good uh, influence. It's a great because venue because I think even six years ago when you guys did start, it wasn't as popular, right? It's That's now right. that it's growing. So, like yep. you said, you know, these specific uh, dogs have their own Instagram, they have their own Facebook, <laughs> and so I think um, I think that's maybe why a lot of people, you know, have pe like personally even come to me and and notice that you know these like specific special needs cases are happening more often, which is absolutely amazing. 
amazing. And like I said, it takes a village to do what you ladies do. So we... We have two dogs in care right now that uh, one just had hip surgery and the other one is about to have hip surgery. Yeah. And they're both uh, incredible and we don't know what the long term mm -hmm. is going to be with them. But, you know, hey... It is what it is. Yeah. We love them. Yeah, and you that's know? well. You all, you guys are heroes. So seriously, thank you. On by, like on behalf of myself, Shaw Spotlight, and our amazing <laughs> community, we just want to say thank you for everything that Pause for Love uh, does, and everything that you two specific ladies do. Um, so obviously, like we mentioned, guys, uh, the two uh, the two bit, auction. two bit auction it's coming up on October October third. So make sure you go to the Facebook page. We'll provide you all with all the details about all these amazing scenarios uh, with all the dogs, and you guys can visit their Facebook, the Instagram, everything, and. Uh, like I said, pause for love, absolutely amazing. They always need help. <laughs> Volunteers, foster parents, and um, yeah, events. You a volunteer, Thank volunteer, you. volunteer. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, thanks again for joining us at Pause and Talk. Have a wonderful uh, day, and we'll see you guys soon.